Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Now, last time we left off after a very successful rescue mission given to us by the skirmishers. As a result, we obtained both a new scientist as well as a new sharpshooter, and we were also able to advance a ranger Starfall Antag to the rank of captain, subsequently unlocking the very important squad size 2 upgrade. So today will be our first mission in which we will be able to field six soldiers, and it will be a guerrilla ops mission in Eastern Europe. At this point, also a big thank you for all of the comments on the last episode, I think the choice here was rather unanimous. At the moment, we don't really have a need for either intel or supplies, but an engineer would be very useful. So we are now heading out into a mission where we will face exclusively advent troops, and probably also the hunter, I think he is due for an appearance. Setting course for Eastern European Ward. And that's why for this mission we are bringing two rangers along. Yes, Jan Hussar Sobierski is getting his first taste of real field action, keeping in mind that the hunter has a weakness to damage dealt from close range attacks. He is also weak to attacks from skirmishers, so that is why Mox comes with us, while snipers in army, Grenadier Nicholas and Specialist Van Dijk round out the squad. A couple of upgrades then before we leave, Nicholas's Mac Cannon receives an autoloader. As you can see, we have three of them, and this is in some ways better than having an expanded magazine, at least if Nicholas does not have to fire too often. And with a second Ranger, we then also want to upgrade a second shotgun, and we'll slap on a laser sight for extra crit chance, that's always good to have on Rangers. And then, just because we have a few of them lying around, we'll go with a repeater, for the rather small but potentially very powerful chance to get instant kills. Again, nothing that we want to rely on, but if it triggers, it's absolutely fantastic. Ranger deployed. Menace, ready to deploy. Apparently the Resistance has been relying on an old data tap along the Advent network that had, up until this point, been eluding the alien's detection. Recent intel suggests the data the Resistance found is critical to the alien's latest operation. Unfortunately, Advent is already moving to take out the device, and we can't let that happen. Eliminate all hostile contacts and secure the area. Protect that device at all costs. Hostile forces are already moving to destroy the data tap installed nearby. We need to lock down the area and secure the device at all costs. It looks like Advent is throwing every grunt they've got at us, Commander. They're flooding the area with troopers. We need to be ready for a fight. Right, so here we are, six people in the tunnels, we have concealment and our objective is quite far away. Technically though, we don't even need to get there, we just need to keep our enemies from destroying it. And as you can see, we don't have a mission timer for that, although strictly speaking we do. Now what the game does not tell you at this point is that this device has a certain number of hit points. How many exactly, that is also not revealed until we have line of sight to it. The only thing we will learn is how much damage the enemies deal to it on their turns. Now the game is fairly generous with the amount of turns it takes until the device is destroyed, but still we shouldn't take too long to reach it. In other words, we want to get our move on and thankfully we don't spot any enemies immediately with Van Dyke here. We do however uncover a potentially useful pathway towards our objective. Mox then also does not spot any enemies behind the door here, and so it's time to pick up the pace and put everyone into position. No overwatches yet, again enemy contact is highly unlikely on this first turn. After all, Advent is focused on a different point of interest. And here they are, three advanced troopers, and we also saw a regular one to the left there, now taking fire and dealing five points of damage to our device. And this amount of damage is fixed, so at least that is somewhat reliable, as no matter how many individual parts of enemies are present at the device, only one of them is actually permitted to deal damage per turn. So it might be a good idea to grab the attention of the enemies attacking the device very soon. However, Ranger Antec first discovers an enemy patrol, consisting of two advanced troopers and an advent priest. Actually, this is the advanced version of the Priest 2, now spawning 13 instead of 8 hit points and a bit more dangerous offensively as well. Still, thanks to concealment, we are able to set everything up nice and quietly here, as we are once again getting ready for the Overwatch ambush. 
We are also skirting around for a potential flanking opportunity with Van Dijk here. And then, on the enemy turn, our targets unfortunately move back a little. I had hoped for them to come a bit closer instead. Either way, the ambush should still work, and it better does, as our precious device here has already lost 10 hit points now. Also, you may have just spotted the Advent Officer, that one just the regular version, likely belonging to the standard troop on the left. For now though, let's focus on the enemies right in front of us, and like I said, we're setting up a nice ambush here, one that does however require us to move a tiny bit further into the area. The main reason for that is Nicholas's grenade range, he simply can't hit them from all the way in the back, and with him in position we then activate Overwatch on everyone but Ranger Sabirsky. He has the Phantom ability, so even if our squad gets revealed, he will not, which also means that he will not fire a reaction shot anyway. Alright, double force on the grenade, off to a good start I'd say. Now it's time to make those reaction shots count. Right, so Mox succeeds in killing off the trooper right away, that's lovely. Unfortunately though, the next target is not the other trooper, but instead the priest. And yes, this is what I had feared, not only does the priest soak up two full reaction shots, thanks to their now 50% chance to trigger the sustain ability, they don't even go down, and the other trooper survives completely unharmed. Sharpshooters and army also did not get to fire a shot at all, but at the very least we now still have that for the enemy turn, and we might actually be able to use that to our advantage, as we now move in our ranger here to throw a frost bomb. Yes, I know, we also could have gone for the kill, but that would have left him in a potentially flankable position. Right, so a couple of things happening at once, it looks like the hunter is indeed here. Now equipped with a new strength, able to summon stun lancers. That's not the end of the world though, and actually quite fitting for this mission. It's dangerous out here. That's one of the elders chosen, and it's not gonna make things easy on us. Let's try to take care of it as quickly as possible. And that's more like it, with his squad mate frozen, the Templar decides to flee, and Tsunami makes her reaction shot count after all. You know that My might brother go. won't be happy you killed a priest. The most dangerous game? Hardly. Our device, meanwhile, takes another 5 points of damage, so that's now 15 in total, but we should be able to draw at least some attention off of it on our next turn here. We start that turn, however, by first killing off the trooper. Thankfully, Mox here is guaranteed to achieve that. Their service is over. At this point, though, it's time to approach the device, and we'll do that with our new ranger who saw Sibirsky, who surprisingly does not actually have line of sight towards any of the enemies here. That is unfortunate, because we now need to waste another move establishing that. Luckily, though, ranger Starfall Antec is quickly detected. I've got eyes on an advent position. <laughs> Even more luckily then, despite all the enemies being huddled closely together, he only attracts the attention of one of the groups, and as you can see, this is by far the easier one. Sadly though, they are still too far away and behind full cover for us to do anything meaningful to them, so instead we'll just spend the rest of our turn here preparing for the next one. If we break line of sight again, chances are that they will actually go back to shooting the device, so we need to play this a bit more aggressively, kind of like a light version of a terror or retribution mission, putting enough pressure on the enemies to keep them from completing their primary objective. Nonetheless, with one group of enemies remaining at the device, it suffers a further 5 points of damage, and now let's see if we can finish this turn unscathed. Right, so despite being marked, high ground and full cover are enough for Ranger Sobierski to remain unharmed, but keep in mind we do have a hunter present. Alright, so all in all, fairly solid turn here, no one took any damage. We do have a trooper on overwatch though, so I think it's a good idea to remove that before we do anything else, and luckily Grenadier Nicholas can just hit him with another grenade. Get ready for a surprise!
Now, this doesn't get us the kill, but the Overwatch is removed and we also have a slightly more direct path towards the device now, and this should also allow us to trigger that other group of troopers fairly easily. For now though, we'll dig deep into our bag of tricks and first activate Run and Gun with Ranger Starfall and Tech, dashing him right into the danger zone for a flanking shot against the officer. We've got a line on the target. Move to protect that gear at all costs. Admin forces on the ground. This also triggers the aforementioned group of troopers, and we can see that our device has about half of its hit points left, so we actually could have progressed a bit more slowly. Either way, the troopers now scatter, and Starfall seems to be in a precarious position. However, this is where a couple of things are now coming together. First of all, he has the Hunter's Axe equipped, so let's see if we can't damage one of the troopers here. Lovely, that's max damage, off to a great start, and because we also unlocked Hunter's Instinct in the Guerrilla Tactics School last episode, Starfall now gets a plus one damage bonus on all flanking shots, which guarantees the one-shot kill against the officer. I got it, right? You don't hesitate to pull the trigger. I like that. Following the kill then, his recently unlocked implacable ability triggers, and as you can see, this now allows him to move again. Now, we'll take care of that in just a moment. I think it's safe to say, though, that this was an eventful turn for our Ranger. Now, however, we want to follow that up with the rest of our squad, starting with Sharpshooter Ada Lynn, who can first of all move out of the Hunter's tracking shot. It, right? Did you see that one? With Lightning Hands, she can then take aim at the trooper. And with that succeeding, we can now try our luck with a 50-50 shot against the other trooper over on the left. Alright, lovely. Looks like Zanami is not here to disappoint either. And with that, enemy numbers are already down to only two. That is, of course, if we don't count the Chosen. And we can maybe reduce that even further as we move down with Mox here, who now also has a flanking shot, but will instead use his Justice Grapple. That way we get the enemy a bit closer to us and the hit is guaranteed. And despite the trooper here still being behind half cover, Hussar Sobieski's shot is virtually guaranteed, and I don't think we're going to miss our second 99%er this soon into the series. And indeed we don't, which means we are now in fact down to only one enemy. This here was indeed a very successful turn. Let us now end it by putting Specialist Van Dyke on Overwatch, and by moving Starfall around the corner here and back into full cover. I'm trusting you here. Okay, so I admit there was a chance of something like this happening. The trooper's hit chance likely wasn't great, but still Mox suffers 5 points of damage, so we better try to keep him safe for the rest of the mission. I'm looking for you. The hunter meanwhile not particularly threatening for the time being, only using another tracking shot mark, but we can easily move out of that with Ranger Starfall here and even grab some loot in the process. And we collect an expanded magazine and a scope, both very useful, and we also establish line of sight with the hunter. The elders aren't happy that you've been blowing up their facilities, Commander. Personally, I've enjoyed the show. We've got the Chosen right where we want them. It's time to strike. For the time being, though, let's focus on the trooper, and before Starfall takes the shot, Mox will. Who came up with the name Skirmishers, anyway? What's wrong? Didn't like the way deserters sounded. As you can see, he is once again guaranteed to hit. More importantly though, this now also guarantees that Starfall gets the kill, and so he is once again able to move afterwards. And with the Hunter unfortunately still pretty far away, the rest of our squad will only establish Overwatch positions for now. That is, except for Van Dyke, who now slaps an 8 protocol on Mox. I think at this point we should be extra careful. And with Starfall then back behind full cover, we can activate a round of Overwatches and begin the hunt for the Hunter. Scanning. I'm on it! Come get some. 
Looks like the elders are sending a few more grunts to the slaughter. Right, and the hunter does the sensible thing, spawning in reinforcements, although we have Hussar Sobieski just waiting for that. Okay, so I think this could have gone worse. The miss from Nicholas was of course disappointing. That would have gotten rid of the hunter's armor, but at this point Starfall being dazed should be manageable. It was definitely a good idea to bring a second ranger along though. And that ranger can now first of all revive his companion. You'll be fine. What am I doing here? Although that still leaves Starfall disoriented. I suppose you owe them the attempt at a rescue. Even if it ends up being a big mistake. Now at this point we want to go on the offensive and the first thing we need to get rid of is the hunter's armor. So let's move in Specialist Van Dyke here to take care of that with a grenade. You're not much for subtlety. Conveniently enough this has also removed all cover and now I think it's time that we give Mox some chance for revenge. So, first of all, we'll have him grapple into a flanking high ground position. This does not cost him an action, so we can immediately follow it up with Wrath, which receives a 3 point damage boost because of his class bonus against the Hunter. The Elders cannot save Don't think I'm going to let that sorry turncoat. If my sister had done her job, you'd already be dead. And we still have an action left, so let's take a shot here, which benefits from both the skirmisher and the brittle bonus. Ammunition nearly gone. I'm going to take your corpse back to the elders myself. And well, I think we're not quite done just yet, as we now have the chance to unlock a lovely achievement and also take out the hunter with Mox. All we need to do is to give him one more extra action using the teamwork ability and his bond with Nicholas. Keep going. And there we are, the Chosen has been defeated and the Can't Stop the Fighting achievement has been unlocked. You surprised me once again, Commander. Maybe I need to reconsider my tactics. We showed the Chosen that the Resistance is here to stay, Commander. Now we just have to find that thing and put it down for good. At this point then, the only enemy remaining is a 1 HP Stun Lancer. And let's give that kill to the new guy, that is, if he can hit the Sword Attack. And he can, which means we are now done here. Target eliminated. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Alright, so far so good. We survived another encounter with the Hunter. Overall, I would say this was a very smooth mission, except of course for that injury to Mox, so let's hope that he won't be out of action for too long. As you can see then, the post-mission photo is starting to get a bit crowded. I think we'll also have to figure out a way to vote for mission MVP now, because unfortunately YouTube polls only allow for a maximum of 5 voting options. The speaker commended loyal citizens today for standing up to those who would abandon our values for those of the old world. The remarks followed a moment of silence for peacekeepers slain by XCOM dissidents. This just goes to show that the Chosen are vulnerable and we can take them down. We just have to figure out how to keep them down. 
Right, here we are, no promotions, but Mox also gets lucky with the injury time here, with only 9 days. Honestly, I had expected that to be a little bit longer. In terms of loot then, a hair trigger and a speed PCS are added to the scope and the magazine we already found. That is the extent of everything we recover from this mission though. Our main reward of course is the engineer, Dr. Ophelia Morningstar. You have done an outstanding job leading the resistance, Commander. And yes indeed, not only have we countered the alien infiltrator dark event, which to be honest was probably not even necessary, but we have also recruited another engineer to our ranks in Ophelia Morningstar. She was submitted by patron supporter Yulos, and her biography reads as follows. Ophelia was raised in a survivalist group out near Denver in the United States, and was trained at an early age how to handle a weapon and not to trust the word of Advent. She lost both her parents in an Advent raid, and vowed to get vengeance ever since. And she will now hopefully get a chance to do that as an engineer in our ranks, as we will have her excavate another building space blocked by alien debris, the other option would have been to dig straight down for the exposed power coil, but making that accessible would not have taken quite as long as excavating here, and we do want to get both the proving ground as well as the training center up soon. At this point then, we can actually start scanning for the first time this episode, although it likely won't be for long, as we are currently in the process of unlocking a supply raid mission, which will then be featured in the next episode. Now first of all, we have another rumor here, but this one only gives us supplies, so I don't think we'll follow up on it. Instead, let's keep going with the one that we started last episode and unlock that supply raid. Avenger plotting new course. Completing this mission will make things a lot easier for us, I think. Especially our number of alien alloys is currently severely lacking. If these are the methods that are required to fulfill my purpose, then so be it. Alright, and we have suffered another chosen sabotage, however this time around the hunter only wiped the black market, and we already took a look at the offerings this month, and ultimately decided that there was nothing worth grabbing. Commander, we need to keep an eye out for the chosen sabotage attempts. We don't have any more time to lose. I've located. And here we are then with a supply rate mission unlocked. Now, over the course of a regular campaign, these types of missions do not appear all that often. They are a fantastic source of loot, however, so investigating this rumor was definitely worth it. The only downside then, as we are reminded of our still outstanding supply drop here, is that we will now have another mission take place only two days after finishing the last one, which might put some strain on our roster, especially if we consider that a good number of soldiers are already out due to tiredness. A few of them should recover shortly, but still there is a chance for yet another mission to pop up shortly, and we don't want to risk having to send out tired or inexperienced soldiers. All of that, however, are questions for the next episode. For today, we'll make the cut here, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.